but for more on, uh, on the Africa on Africa in the World Cup. I'm joined by two of my colleagues, Mohamed El Shinawi, who recently returned from Moscow, where he watched the matches up close, and Drew Haman Dia, who was in the car. So people were starting to to lower expectations and saying, well, you know, anything could happen. Everybody were hopeful that they could go on to the next round, but they were starting to say, you know what, anything could happen because we, we lo lost the opportunity to win against Japan. Yeah. And, you know, what many were fearing actually happened with Colombia. They were not able to, to at least have a draw to, to make it to the next round. So there was a lot of disappointment. Yeah. And people then actually took it with philosophy to, yeah, to, yeah they, you know, especially after yesterday's yeah. Japan game, uh, which did very well, people were saying, you know, after all, you know, everybody is good when you yeah. go to the World Cup. Yeah. So I mean, we need to really accept well. that. Yeah. Exactly. So, Mohammed, you were there, man. I wish I was in your bag, the traveling bag, because uh, how was it like being in Moscow? Well, being with the fans yeah. was quite a different experience because the last time I watched uh, World Cup was covering for The Voice of America as a correspondent in 1990 in Italy. But being with the fans, whether in the stadium, in the first fan, in uh, Moscow Strip, where everybody's mingling, it was quite a different yeah. experience, especially that the Egyptians were in large numbers. Yes. I was watching the uh, Egyptian team, of course, and the estimated number of spectators uh, is between 15 and 20,000 Egyptians. Wow. And, and you know, that shows you the expectation that was there. So from uh, what you were hearing, what happened with the Egyptian team, for example, one of the African teams that is out? Well, the Egyptian team is like most Arab and African teams. They rely on one or two players and they are not playing as a group. Unlike France, France has stars, but they play as a, a team. Yeah. So they relied heavily on the second game on Mohamed Salah and even the coach, the Portuguese coach yeah. of the Egyptian team said Mohamed Salah is a, a very good player but he needs a team and that was the problem. Yes. Now, uh, Abdurrahman, looking overall, I mean this is the first time as we mentioned since 1982 that there's no African team that went beyond that stage. I mean, what were you hearing? Is it to do with uh, continental and preparedness or was there something there's a lot of controversy on the choices that the coach made uh, Alu Cisse uh, but then you know people came to understand his choices but uh, you know they were less forgiving when actually they lost it was all on him and they think that because he didn't he wasn't able to put together the best team uh, together so uh, it's all of the above but in my personal view, um, they need to work hard to, to get local players uh -huh. and not always rely on those who play Professional. in, in Professional. Europe. Yes. You know, they need That's local championships yeah. exactly. in order to, to do better. Build, build uh, the, uh, the talent at home and just right. uh, don't rely on guys coming back. Right. They do, but yeah. they, always, they always send them to the you know, European down, leagues. Got, yes. right. So, Mohammed, uh, first, um, I see you have your ticket here, you have your, your ID. How was it uh, even just getting to Moscow, getting to the venue of the, of the game? Well, they were very strict and organized about going to the gate and show the fan ID, mm -hmm. and then they would scan it, and you show the ticket, they would scan it. If they are not corresponding to each other, you are not allowed. Wow. And then, if you have a banner, which I had, a banner for Mohammed Salah, yeah. And uh, the guard said, you have to show me what is written on it. And it was in Arabic, the best player in yeah. English team, uh, English uh, league. And then he said, this is, I need a translation. And luckily I had translation in Russian, English and Spanish. And after he saw it, he said, excuse me, because we don't allow any racism into that. <laughs> so that, 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 that was, was very good. sweet. Now, Abrahman, uh, in, in terms of uh, the future of the continent, I mean, what do you think are the lessons that could be taken from the really poor performance of all the African teams and including those that didn't even make it in? Mm. They need to understand that everyone is doing better and they cannot uh, stay behind. If they want something, they just... Uh, the, 
governments in, in, in Africa, they put a lot of money for these teams to go to, to the World Cup. And in return, they expect, you know, all this uh, joy from the people. And, you know, it does calm down the pressure. And I was interviewing one friend who was saying, you know, during World Cup, we forgot about politics, all these controversies. So it does add a lot of positive vibes to yeah. the countries. But in exchange, they need to work harder and, you know, be at the international level, just like the other teams. They cannot just go there mm -hmm. just to participate. It is important to participate, yeah. but they need to up their games as well. And Mohammed, what do you think? And including also this uh, protest over the discipline uh, kind of clause now, the, the rule of uh, being disqualified or losing by discipline. Actually, uh, 20... 26 would be a golden opportunity for African and Arab teams in Africa to shine because they will increase the number of participants from five to nine. But between now and then, we have to adopt a different approach to prepare the national teams in Africa because out of frustration, fans said something very funny uh, in Moscow. They said FIFA is F-I-F-A. It stands for Football is not for Africans or Arabs. But uh, <laughs> to this, we got to up our game ourselves. We have a lot of talent, and I think it behoves uh, uh, the African uh, governments and countries to support young talent, and we hopefully we'll do much better in the future. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining me today. Thank you for having us. All right, and we look forward to that. Mohammed Abdurrahman, Mohammed and Abdurrahman, uh, Voice of America reporters, and thank you for giving us this fine analysis.